Okay, now I'm going to talk about the fundamentals of handling file uploads with PHP. So, building web forms, most of the time you're dealing with text data. So, usernames, email addresses, addresses, things like that. However, there are going to be times where you need to be able to upload a file person has an input of type equals file inside their form or multiple ones and you know you click you pick a file and then you upload it so how do we deal with that with PHP now if I select a file here I'm gonna go and jump into a folder I will grab uh, just one of these SVG icons I've got there we are this is the file that I want to upload it's an SVG file. So I'm going to upload this to the server, but I need to be able to handle that through my PHP code. So let's take a look at how we can do that. Now, there is another super global array called files. This is the um, array that will contain every single file that you upload from a web form. So if you submit a multi-part form data fi uh, form, so that's the encoding type that I'm using. Now that's very important to note here. You can't use the URL encoded version of the encoding for a form if you want to upload a file. It must be multi-part form data. Very important to remember that. Without this, you'll never get the actual attachment to your form showing up. It won't complain in the browser. The PHP won't complain either. What's going to happen is when the request gets to the PHP page and it starts dealing with it, it means it doesn't realize that there was something attached to the file, or there was no file attached to the form, rather. So we have to have that encoding type. Then for each one of the files that you're uploading, there will be an array. So files is an array of arrays inside of files whatever you used is the name. So in this case, I used pick. This is going to be the name in here, in the first form field. Oh, sorry, as the first array key. So if I was to write this out, I said files sub pick. That's going to be accessing the first file that was uploaded. Now I only have one, but that's going to access it. Then because this is a two-dimensional array, there's a second set of square brackets. These are the five possible values. So there's name, type, size, error, and temp name. Name, that's the name right here. So cordova.svg, that would be the name. So if I write that out, save it. So it's undefined because I haven't uploaded it yet. Let's go in here and we'll pick CSS3. We'll do that one. Upload. CSS3.svg. That is the file name. So whatever file name the user had. So we have to be very careful with this. Um, I've got a little note here saying use base name because if they've got invalid characters or if they're trying to spoof a path by naming a file after some path on your system, you don't want to do that. You, you want to protect yourself from that. So use base name on this value. This will strip out anything that looks like a path. It means that it will fail. It won't be able to find the file, but we can fix the problem that they're trying to attack us with. Type. This is the um, the MIME type, the multi-part internet mail extension type. Things like uh, text slash HTML and so on. This is an image slash SVG that we're uploading. So if I change name to type, there we are, image slash SVG plus XML. That is the MIME type for an SVG file. Now again, we need to be careful because this can be spoofed. This is really coming off of whatever file extension it was that I picked. So we need to be careful about this one. Uh, we're going to look at using this f f uh, file info. F info is the name of the, uh, the object, the constructor method. So I'm going to copy this bit down here and let's do this. We're going to create a new file info object. We have to pass in this constant. This is we're looking for the MIME types. This is going to be kind of like a, a list of all the potential MIME types that are defined within PHP. 
you can pass in a second parameter where you have your very own database file that lists off your own special file extensions, but we're just going to use the defaults that are part of PHP. File name. Well, you can hard code a file name. I've got this file in my folder. I've got this PNG file. And then I'm going to write out what the file type is. So if I save that, and let's put a uh, carriage return or a line break after this. There we are. So this is the value that you get. Image slash PNG char set binary. So the character set is binary. It's a binary file is what this means. And it's a PNG. It's an image, which that's what the file extension said. But this is actually going into the binary file itself to make sure that this is actually a PNG file. So that's what we're getting back here. We don't want somebody to spoof what the type of file is by just changing the file extension, um, which you can do with type. So we're going to take uh, the actual file that's uploaded and have a look at it. Uh, actually, that brings us to temp name. The way that files are handled in PHP is when you submit a form, the file gets uploaded and it's placed by the web server, Apache or Nginx or whatever it is, Apache will place it into a temporary folder. It's actually the same place where session files are stored, but by default. Um, the files get placed into that folder, and then they sit there waiting for you to do something with it. So we're going to use the temp name as the location, and then we're going to use the function move uploaded file to take it from the temporary location and put it in whatever folder we want. You can also do tests to see if something is actually a file that has been uploaded by HTTP POST. So we're going to, we could use that with an if statement to make sure that somebody's not trying to spoof us and take a file that we don't want them to take. We're going to use base name to protect ourselves. We're going to use the file info to protect ourselves on the type. Temp name that temp location. So let's do that instead of hard coding in this avatar here. So I'm going to comment that out. And we'll come back in here and files. That's the super global array. Pick is the name from the, the form field. Looking down here, pick was the name, not the ID, but the name. And then I want temp name. That is the actual value. So let's, yes, confirm. And there it is text slash plane. So this is a text plane. Oh, yeah, sorry. It's SVG. I was thinking it was the PNG, but no, this is um, a text file. That's what is coming out of this. This is testing to make sure that what we're getting is SVG. SVG is text. So it is telling us plain text instead of image slash SVG. But um, this is a more useful thing when you're dealing with uh, actual binary files like PNGs, JPEGs, uh, Word docs, things like that, if you want to test those. Text, um, well, not as useful, but um, we are finding out that this is a text file, which is uh, a lot safer than just accepting a binary file without doing any testing on it. All right, so that's the, uh, the testing for the file type. We've got the temp name is the temporary location. We could uh, write that out here to take a look at it as well. So temp name, let's see what it says. Yep, so inside my MAMP folder, there's the temp folder. There's a PHP folder inside of temp, and this is actually the name of the file. So the SVG file that was uploaded, that's the new file name. That's what it's being saved as inside my operating system. That's the file that I need to move into some other location, and I need to name it something as well. Now, I can take the base name of whatever they gave me, but if you're in a situation where you're saving a lot of files from a lot of different users, you don't want to take the chance that, hey, you know, this, this file could be uh, named something that I'm not expecting. This file could be named something that's going to try and spoof or attack me. This file, or that can be used in an attack on my server. This file could be named the same thing as what somebody else named their file. Like if you were accepting avatar images, or if you were accepting resumes, 
there's a good chance that two people are going to have the same file name. They both called it avatar.jpg or avatar.png or resume.doc. So we're going to generate our own file names. So using a timestamp is a great way to do that. You just grab the current timestamp and add the file extension onto it, and then that becomes the name of the file that you're saving on the server. Now the last two things here, size and error. Size tells you the file size. If that is zero, there's a problem. However, we can check on error. So files, pick, error. These are the possible values for the errors, and I kept them in here as a reference for you. So if it's zero, you're good to go. As long as file error is zero, you are fine. The file was uploaded, it was the right size, it didn't exceed any maximums, um, it didn't fail halfway through, and that's what all these other numbers are. There's no number five, that was deprecated a long time ago, but um, number one and two have to do with the file being too big. In your PHP INI file, there's the upload max file size directive. This gives a limit to how big the file can be. Um, I have another video on php.ini, some of the interesting settings, and I talk about some of the uh, file upload related settings in that video. I'll put a link to that inside the comments for you as well. Exceeds max file size. This is something that uh, came along with the early versions of PHP. You can, in any one of your um, HTML forms, add a hidden input field and give it the name max file size. Like that. Uh, yep, yeah, max file size. I spelled it correctly. And then the value is how many bytes? You know, so I can write inside here how many bytes. Okay, well, let's go for 20 million bytes. That's the max file size that I'm going to allow to upload. The problem with this is you're putting it inside the HTML form. So anybody can spoof this. Anybody can submit a form and put their own value for this. So it's going to have just any value at all that they've sent to me. I can't really rely on that. So what I need to do is have my PHP INI setting. This is what I'm going to rely on, that it's the right size. The form size, well, it's there. They check it, but it's not really of a lot of value to us. If somebody sets this at a really small size and submits it to us, well, they're just preventing their own files. It's when they put a really large file size inside here to try and get past my PHP INI setting. That's why we have this one. Error partial, well, it failed halfway through. No file was uploaded. No temp directory, so they, the, um, there was no temp directory to write to. Can't write is, well, obviously it's a write failure. Uh, you uploaded a file, but uh, the system failed to save it to the temp directory. And then upload error extension. If you've got some other extensions installed with PHP, if you've got other modules installed with PHP, and for some reason they got involved in the process of uploading or writing this file, and the process failed because of one of these other extensions. That's when you get this other error. It's kind of a catch-all for any other problem that happened with the file upload. Okay, so let's um, let's do something with this file. We're uploading the file. First thing you do whenever you're doing an upload of any data whatsoever, you want to check and make sure that you're getting what you expected. So we can check inside of files to see, hey, was there something called pick inside the files array? If so, fantastic. If not, write an error message. Always write error messages to your user. So that would just be in else error message to user. If it does exist, then we need to check, all right, error codes. Was there an error? So if files sub pick, now we already checked in the previous line that this does exist, so I don't have to check again that this exists. And if there was something called pick, then I can check the error number. So if that was equal to zero, once again, always add the error messages. Error to user, file error, and you can write out the details based on that number. 
you know what the problem is so that you can write out a specific message to the user. Now, we're going to have that temp name and a real name. And we're going to write, or sorry, move the uploaded file. We're going to move it from this location. Temp name includes, as we saw right here, it included the entire location. So it's the full file path plus the file name. We're going to use move uploaded file from this location to wherever we want to put it. So we'll create our own, our directory. And I'm just going to write it inside my current directory. Inside there, and my file name is going to be, well, I'm going to take a timestamp. And we'll convert this str val. So we're going to take the string version of that. Oh, sorry, I th yeah, str val has no underscore in it. And then we will concatenate. Normally, I would do some checks using the file info or testing the file extension or, you know, based on what this is, I know what it's supposed to be. I'm going to do a test to make sure that I'm getting the right kind of file. For this example, just to be fast, I'm just going to append SVG on the end of it. So my file name is going to end up being something like 15000.svg. So that's what my file name is going to look like. Now, uh, move uploaded file. That's what we want to use. And the first thing is files, pick, temp name. From that location, we're going to upload to a new file, which is going to be concatenation of the dir plus the slash plus file name that we created. So this is new file. Now, move uploaded file. This is going to give you a return value. So you can put this into a variable like this. You can say return equals that, or just wrap this inside of an if statement. And once again, always add your error messages. So we have to tell the user that that went wrong. And if it worked correctly, then, ah, uh, well, we don't have to do uh, much else. Let's just write out the, uh, the message to the user that it worked. Okay, so echo. Um, files, pick, name, was uploaded and saved as file name. There we go. And there it is. CSS3.svg was uploaded and saved as that. I try this again. I'll try a different file. So let's try the gulp.svg logo. Boom. Upload. There we go. And it's a different file name. So this one ended in 3634. Try another one. Phone gap. 3644. Okay, great. So this is working. We've got these uploading. And if I uh, take a look at my file folder to make sure that those exist, just uh, come over here to Finder. And here's my current folder. There they are. So there's the four SVG files, and if I take a look at them, they are perfectly fine. So I've got two copies of the CSS3 logo that were uploaded, and then the phone gap and the gulp logo. All right, so that is the basics of how to handle file uploads. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.